Anyway, as I was saying, my name is Divakar. I work for a company called Avitas. Uh, and today I'm going to talk about how we used WebAssembly is one of uh, one use case uh, which helped us out. Uh, I'm sure there are multiple ways of doing it, but uh, I'm going to talk about how we use WebAssembly and what we use Web WebAssembly for. Uh, at a high level, okay, let me go into the present mode. Click the present button at the top right. Oh, right there. A uh, little about Abitas Systems, the company that I work for. Uh, basically, we provide inspection as a service. Uh, what this means is uh, we inspect uh, these huge uh, assets. Uh, main, our main business is oil rigs. Uh, we inspect oil rigs for leaks and uh, stuff like that. Uh, we use drones and robotic infrastructure to inspect them. Uh, basically, the Drones and uh, robots do nothing but they take pictures of the entire asset. They can go under tunnels and everything. Um, and then uh, we create 3D models of the asset. And on the right side, you can see uh, this is one of the 3D models. I can show you how it looks also. And uh, we take all the, all these images are uh, sent to a software called uh, Bentley Context Capture. And then it creates the 3D model. And now that we have all the images, these are all high resolution images. Uh, we can analyze the images using machine learning algorithms to detect oil leaks, you name it. So anything. So we also provide services for something like power lines. Uh, I don't know if you heard about uh, the California campfire. Uh, looks like it, it was caused by uh, PG&E. PG&E um, had a problem. Now they're saying that they'll go bankrupt if they are the cause of the fire. Because uh, like 80 people died, or uh, 30 people died, I guess. So anyway, so. This, this inspects the uh, site and assets and provides uh, uh, preventive, uh, we, we provide uh, ways to prevent uh, problems. So I, I work on mainly the portal that visualizes the 3D models and annotated images. At a high level, this is what it is. It's a image intensive application. So WebAssembly, uh, we use WebAssembly to compress some of the uh, images at a high level. So currently, I mean, uh, uh, we, as I was saying, we have drones. Uh, these drones uh, take all these pictures. They take around 2,000 high-resolution pictures. Each one is like 10 to 20 meg. And we run it through a batch process. We dump it into a CDN. And we have, a, we have server processes that take these uh, images. They create the 3D models. Uh, they analyze the images. Uh, and then they analyze the images basically for uh, uh, we let, if you take oil and gas, they analyze it for oil leaks and other kinds of leaks. So uh, for visualization on the browser-based application side, we have to cut the images. I'll show you why. So we create something like thumbnails or smaller uh, images. We have to cut the images so that it's easier to consume for the inspector or whoever is viewing the, uh, whoever is viewing the uh, images. Or, uh, we use a CDN currently. The CDN doesn't provide image optimizations. A lot of CDNs out there provide uh, image optimizations, but the CDN we use does not. So we have to, we have to create our, we have to cut our own uh, images. Basically, we take this huge image and cut it into uh, uh, change the resolution to those 320 by 240, 640, and we also keep the original one. Um, so this is the current process. Uh, and uh, so as you can see in the batch process, we get all the images at once from the drone. But there is a need, uh, there was a need for user, uh, there was a need for uh, the site inspectors. Let's say someone goes to the site, there is a need for, once in a while there is a need for them to go and upload images ad hoc. Because whatever reason, something got missed. They wanted to take a picture of like, maybe the fence or something like that. So, and uh, because the batch ingestion already happened, uh, uh, these images have to be, uh, the, uh, the web application is used on a laptop or a slow connection. So this one, let's say the oil rig is in Alaska, they don't have the best of the connections there. So they'll have to upload the image from there, which is pretty slow. Uh, the connection is slow, the image is high, and they'll have to cut these images. Uh, and uh, the to feedback the inspectors, they are not techie guys, so they need instant feedback. 
So that this were, those were some of the use cases that we had to deal with. Uh, we had a few architectural approaches. One is do it in JavaScript, use Canvas to cut the images on the client side and give immediate feedback. They can see the images that they uploaded immediately in the browser. Um, and the other approach is WebAssembly on the client side. Server side processing was not an option because to upload a 20 meg image on the client side will take like a minute over slow 3G connections. So that was not an option because they didn't want to wait three minutes. They want immediate feedback, a little more faster feedback. So we, I'll show you what JavaScript on Canvas on the client side does and WebAssembly on the client side does. Any questions so far, by the way? So they're taking these uh, inside pictures. The <clears throat> whole solution that you're looking for, they're doing these on their phones? No, they have high resolution cameras. Okay, and then they're so, transferring those. Over yeah, so they have a SD card and then, okay. uh, yeah. Cool. yeah. They put it in the laptop and then upload it. So they have to process it also. Yeah. So uh, this is one of the solutions. I think if you want to uh, cut images, on the in the browser, uh, a simple uh, some code will look like this. You take the file uh, that they're uploading. You do use create image bitmap. Create image bitmap is a uh, web API that lets you create a bitmap on on a worker away from the main thread. You create a canvas element, and then you say, hey, I, I want a new image uh, with the width and whatever the width and height is, and then you create a new image. You got a new image, and then you can upload it. This is one way of doing it. Uh, this was op this is op option one, but this is the more not the most optimized way. I'll show you why. And option two is WebAssembly. Uh, I don't know how many of you know about WebAssembly, but WebAssembly at a high le high level is a, a new web technology. Uh, it is uh, I'll read it out. WebAssembly is a binary instruction format for stack based virtual machine. It's designed for a portable target for compilation. Uh, all the blah blah blah, but anyway, to that, uh, for me, what that means is I can use existing C, C++ libraries uh, that are tested out and very performant. And for example, like the libwebp, uh, webp. I don't know if you know. This is a Google initiated uh, format for images. Uh, it's a C based library, um, and it's extremely performant. It does a very good job of image compression. Uh, and uh, the more details are at that uh, GitHub link. So, oops, yeah. So, WebAssembly, we take the C library, and uh, uh, I, I just put the link to uh, one of the articles uh, which talks about how to take a C library and convert it to WebP. Uh, anyway, so uh, I took that. Uh, uh, I took the article and converted it, and it, it basically gives you a WASM file, which is a binary file. Binary files obviously are much smaller than JavaScript text-based files, and there is a wrapper, a JavaScript wrapper that wraps around this binary WASM file. So this will encode or let us compress the file. And uh, this is some code uh, that that allows you to do it. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Basically, I import the, uh, I load the a JavaScript file, and then uh, uh, there is some boilerplate code to set it up, and then uh, I load the image. Uh, because we are dealing with uh, in uh, WebAssembly, doesn't uh, you have to do your uh, own uh, memory management? It's like C, so you have to do it unlike Java, which does uh, garbage collection by itself. Here, you have to do it yourself. So I create an image, uh, and then I create a buffer. And then I say that, hey, I, I want, uh, I create a buffer big enough for the image. That's that's what image width and image height are doing there, uh, using create buffer. And then I, I put uh, the image data inside, oh, that's supposed to say image instead of image data, by the way, uh, on line of this line. <coughs> Oops. So anyway, so it's supposed to say image. So I put the image's data into P, which is uh, nothing but a buffer. And then I encode it, uh, and I, I do a bunch of things. Anyway, I, I will not go into the details of this, but uh, uh, it converts it. Basically, it converts my image uh, into a WebP image. I, I can upload anything, like a JPEG or a PNG or anything. Uh, it converts it into a, a WebP object, and then I can upload it. 
So this C++ code that you yeah. use, does that have to be installed on the user machine no. in the browser? It converts uh, WASM, converts the C files, like let's say you have a simple add function, add A plus B. It converts that add A plus B to a WASM binary. So there is a library called mscripten that we use to convert the C, we compile the C code to WASM. And the WASM, WASM files served by the web server. Exactly. All, all, uh, no, it, it, all web uh, browsers support WASM right now. But I so think Mark, he's asking how does it get to the... Yeah, oh yeah, it gets browser. to the, yeah, so it's, from it's, a server. Yeah. Is your encode.js, is that the WASM? No, no. encode.js is a wrapper around encode.wasm. Encode.wasm is the, uh, encode.wasm <coughs> gets created by an mscripten library okay, that right. takes all the C code and puts it in wasm. So you just include it like you would include a JavaScript file. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's not script. It's not script. Right. It's all. It's a binary file. Okay. How much of the C code did you have to change to get it to? I think uh, in this case, we did, uh, I didn't have to change any code. Any really? code. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think if it's written in a standard way, most of the most in most cases you have to change. You don't have to change any C code. Yeah. I think this if this R this tiny URL. I think uh, if you go there. All the steps are listed out. You'll see that not even a single line of code. Okay, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what's the security model around that? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's extremely secure. Wasm is more secure than JavaScript. So you can't just write C code to have it leave the browser and no. do stuff. No, no. Because it still yeah. runs in the same box. So no, yeah, yeah. Really that's lovely. Big yeah. Yeah. Wasm is supposed to be like way more secure than any other uh, language. Okay. Any other binary, binary format. So anyway, we go through uh, a bunch of uh, uh, functions and create the WebP uh, project. And then this is the comparison, uh, the high resolution image, the one of the high resolution images that we were dealing with. Uh, basically, if you compress with Java in Canvas, it came to eight eight meg. If I use Wasm. Uh, by the way, you can use other libraries too. There is Moz JPEG, and you name it, so many libraries to compress. If I use the WebP compression, which is one of the best ones out there, it kind of came to 1.5, which is 81% reduction. I would take that any day. Uh, if you take the smaller ones also, the smaller ones also at least 50% compression. Um, so for an image-heavy application like ours, this is like a, a huge deal. So. Uh, we used uh, Wasm to. We ended up using Wasm to uh, compare it, uh, compress uh, all the images. And this is the Squish app. Squish app. I don't know how many of you uh, did. Any of you watch the Chrome Dev Summit that happened uh, last week or this week? I guess. Anyway, so the, uh, they released the Squish app, uh, app called Squish, where they allow they use WebAssembly to let you compress images into like ten different formats uh, quickly. Uh, show that. <clears throat> so this is the yeah, so this is the Squish app, and it lets you uh, select a, an image. I think I'll take one of the big images uh, <clears throat> if it loads. So anyway, so this is like a humongous image. By the way, you only see part. You're only seeing part of it. Uh, this one is the eight meg uh, one, and then uh, they allow you to. Everything is web, web assembly. Basically, they used uh, a bunch of C libraries, C, C++ libraries, and converted them to WASM modules. So it'll allow you to convert uh, it into OpPNG or Moz, JPEG, or WebP, a bunch of other formats. So, and uh, yeah. So you don't have to, uh, WebP, as most of you know, I think it's only supported in two browsers. Uh, it's only supported in uh, Edge and uh, Chrome. So if you want to convert it to a JPEG, you can use a, another uh, encoder. Yeah. Do you know what other source languages are supported? You said it's C supported C almost in everything. Java now, uh, uh, what is the TypeScript, the new version of TypeScript? I mean, it's supported in Go, you mean in Java, yeah, 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 right now. Huh? .NET targets it too. Yeah, .NET. A lot of languages. You can compile a lot of existing libraries. .NET 
something that's written in C sharp into WebAssembly now. So, so a, a lot of the examples that I've seen <coughs> of WebAssembly end up just out putting it into uh, like WebGL. So a lot of people recreating games and things yep. of that nature. Um, so if this application is using WebAssembly, is everything on the page being generated by WebAssembly, no. or are these standard so, HTML yeah. JavaScript components? That exactly. Are in in our case, we only use it for uploading uh, okay. these images. So the rest of the application is pure JavaScript, uh, HTML, CSS. And. But you can use it to generate UI. Like I know they exactly. the Doom guys. They, yeah. they, they yeah. I think the Unreal Engine. They converted yeah. Unreal yeah. Engine to uh, WebAssembly. Uh, okay. They have That's Unreal cool. WebAssembly. And they, they have, uh, what is the other one? Yeah, the most famous one. Anyway, so, oh, no, the, the engine, the engine, I'm talking about the engine. So, anyway, so they converted a lot of them. They converted actually the uh, the CAD software, uh, the entire thing, that they converted from C, C++ to WASM, and it runs in a browser. Some blockchains are using it even. Yeah, blockchains, a lot of blockchains are using it. Yeah, it's a really cool .NET project called Blazor, and it's you basically write C sharp code, gets compiled into um, WebAssembly, and then it runs everything on the on, on the browser. But it's literally your .NET DLLs on the runtime, and everything is in the browser. I think, yeah, um, the React thing you're talking about, the React, the DOM diffing there, DOM diffing, they're planning to do it in WASM yeah. because it, it will be much faster. much faster. So right now they, they do it in JavaScript. So, 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 so it's VB script for the modern era. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of duck and DLL oh, yeah. <laughs> running in Chrome. <laughs> that doesn't sound right at all. So this is one of the 3D models that I was talking about. I mean, this is a site, and this is a oil rig, and then we inspect for oil leaks and stuff like that. Annotations. So when you said oil rig, I imagine something in the sea. Oh, that art is also there, and this one is. Uh, I think this one is somewhere in Texas. I think so. Yeah. Check is that a leak there? Huh? Looks like it has water. <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a QR scan. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I think oh, it tells you where uh, things are relative to. Uh, I think they use those things to calculate the relative position of the rig for all kinds of analysis. So, okay, so is WebAssembly in all reality going to affect the rest of us that yes. just build applications with JavaScript? Yes, right? yeah, yes. Definitely. Why? Huh? So it's, it's, first of all, faster. Uh, it's much faster. <coughs> Web applications are becoming bigger and bigger. So it, it's coming up with threads. Soon it will get access to work DOM. So right now it doesn't have access to the DOM. So once it has access to the DOM, uh, you can do wonders with it, right? I mean, you have threading and access to the DOM. So, so we don't need JavaScript developers anymore. Um, I think, I don't know, it, maybe 10 years down the road, the whole landscape will change. So with what, the other thing Time is. Time to start learning, boys. <laughs> the other thing is VASM. Well, you can remember, at the end of the day, the browser understands three languages and three languages only. It's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And JavaScript is what's allowing us to work in the browser. So JavaScript's not going anywhere. No, no, VASM, it understands VASM also. All browsers understand VASM. But don't you need JavaScript to kind of interface with it? No, you don't have to. So the wrapper that's there, it makes it easier. But you can directly load VASM. Yeah. So is this Cross-platform, you can huh? yeah. Is it cross-platform? It works across all platforms. Yeah. No, uh, I was wondering if you have an example of how your JavaScript actually calls yeah. within within the WASM file. Yeah, it's a so that file itself is generated, by the way. But I'll show you. But this reminds me a long time ago, uh, Netscape I think would allow JavaScript to load up Java. Yeah, so the thing, the problem with that, uh, uh, yeah. there was applets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, applets, right? Applets, it used to do applets before. Okay. But the problem there was it was not uh, accepted across all browsers. But this one, this technology is across all browsers. Yeah, the user doesn't get to control it. User doesn't the user can't say, don't run this right. applet. Yeah, exactly. They don't, yeah. They don't so get to squash you. Right. Yeah. You can say, no, I am going to run this Bitcoin mining yeah. uh, WASM thread in the background. Sure. Uh, 
Yeah. Hope you enjoy that. You mentioned multi-threaded. Yes. Uh, all this is still yeah. running within the but browser's but process. Really yes. Yeah. Like, oh, well, so I. But the browser you know. isn't that. About 40 no, anyway, so no, 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 browser is not single thread. You have web workers right now, right? You can you can uh, fire <coughs> web workers right now. It is multi-threaded. Browser apps are multi-threaded. You choose. You can choose to use multi-threading, or you can choose to use single thread. Right? No, yeah, JavaScript is single JavaScript thread, is single thread. but the browser isn't. Yeah. Yeah. Even in JavaScript, I mean, you can fire off a web worker. It works on its own thread, right? Let me see. I'll find it after no, this. That's fine. Right. That's all I have. Any other questions? Uh, thank you. I think we should get a crack.